And then, I want you to turn over to 1 John chapter number 5. John chapter 10, 1 John chapter number 5. God from my Bible tonight. Amen. <clears throat> Been preaching a little bit on the subject of blessed assurance. Uh, Dr. Seitler said many years ago that the most uh, read and most uh, paid for book he ever wrote was one on uh, assurance of salvation. Uh, sometimes people struggle with that. I, I hear a lot of these preachers, they say, well, if you doubt your salvation, you're not saved. That's about as ignorant as anything I've ever heard, and I've heard a lot of that going on. Listen, people can be saved, and sometimes they can forget they're even purged from their old sin, uh, the Bible said. So you can, you can go a long way. I, I know, of, I wonder sometime about old Demas. Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and departed unto Thessalonica. Uh, he was a fellow soldier. He was a fellow laborer. He was a very close friend of the Apostle Paul. Uh, for a long time, got out of the will of God. You can get out of the will of God. Uh, but before I deal with John chapter number uh, 10, I, I want to read something. First John is written to my little children. You go First John chapter 2, verse number 1, My little children, these things write I unto the, you. So he's writing to save. This is not a book to the lost people. This is a book to save people. This is a love a letter from him. When you get down to chapter number 5, I want you to look at verse number 13. He said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. They're saved. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. They had some things that they were not assured of at that particular time. And then he went on in verse number 13 and said this, And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Uh, so we find in verse number 16, and this is the confidence that we have in Him. So He was instilling confidence into the people of God. Now we go back to John. I want to look at one verse tonight, and that's verse number 27. And I'm going to be in, in here another couple of weeks uh, down through verse number 30. But look at verse number 27. He said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. There are three things in there. I've already dealt with two of them. And I'm going to deal with the third one tonight. But I want you to notice one. He said, my sheep. He's talking about people that are saved. People that know Jesus Christ. We saw the blessedness of those that are in Christ. They're not only saved, they're forgiven they're washed, they're sanctified, justified, they're sons of God, they are complete in Jesus Christ. Thank God tonight that salvation is an act of God. We bring an old bankrupt sinner to Christ, and all we have to do is receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said that the gospel is the power of God uh, unto salvation to everyone who believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek in Romans chapter 1. So we find that salvation is something that Jesus Christ did. He finished the gospel. So it's a finished work. We just bring an old sinner to Christ. Hey, you repent of that sin. The Bible talks about over in Hebrews chapter 6. He said repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Now, he clarified what repentance is. Uh, when we repent of who we are, listen, we can't get to heaven on our own. We can't pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. So he said repentance from dead works. That means uh, you've got to stop trying to be saved or get saved yourself. I deal with a lot of people, and, and boy, I find a total lack of misunderstanding. They don't, they don't understand. I ask them if they're going to heaven. They say, well, I'm doing the best I can, or I'm trying, or they use that terminology. And I hear that quite a bit when I'm witnessing to people. And I normally tell them, well, when you quit trying, you can get saved. As long as you think you're going to get there by something you're doing, you're not going any place. 
You've got to realize who and what you are. So at part one, we found salvation. He said in verse 27, my sheep. You spend a lot of time with that. Aren't you glad tonight you're sheep? A lot of people are goats. Then we found the part two of it is spiritual growth. My sheep, something they do. They hear my voice. You say, what's the voice of God? I've got it in my hand. That's why in the first mention of, 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 of the Word of God, the Bible said they heard the Word of God walking in the garden. Adam and Eve walked with the Word of God. We understand that was Jesus Christ. But at the same time, not a physical presence. They operated with a voice. When Jesus comes back in the book of Revelation, He'll have written on His vesture and upon His thigh the Word of God. John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. Uh, all things were made by Him, the Word of God. He deals a lot. You get down to verse number 14, And the Word finally took on a physical body, was made flesh. For the first time, the Word of God became flesh. They walked in the Old Testament with the Word of God. They walked with the voice of God. Thank God tonight we've got the Word of God in our hands. So don't expect God to speak to you from heaven in an audible voice. Now, I know the still small voice and thank God. But we find my sheep, but we find that they hear my voice. Now, I find a time there of spiritual growth. Sometimes when people get saved, we expect them the next day to be Apostle Paul's. And I thank God for the Apostle Paul. Boy, he had, we call it an Apostle Paul experience. Uh, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, It's Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? You notice what he did with the word Lord. Who art thou, Lord? He knew it was God speaking to him. And then he recognized Jesus Christ as Lord. And, he, hey, and immediately... Friend, he, he began to preach the Word of God. I, listen, children have to have time to grow. We have babies, and these babies are on milk, and eventually they get weaned. But while they're still on milk, you start giving them, we used to call it table scraps. You know, we'd, we'd get the little jars of green beans and all this. Hey, we'd, we'd mash up potatoes and put gravy on it, and boy, I'd feed them eggs soft. Uh, it, we just we fed them right off of the table, and they did real well with it. God's children have to grow. And the way they grow is they have to listen to the voice of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We apply that to salvation. But I find two hearings in that verse. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can hear the word of God, but not listen to it. My sheep hear my voice. They knew the Master. So we found last week a time of spiritual growth that brings about assurance of deliverance, peace, blessing, security. Oh, but I'm talking about what a blessing it is to see God's people grow in the Lord. I heard a man say one time, the largest denomination in the United States is the Church of the Ignorant Brethren he said, because the Apostle Paul kept writing to that crowd, I, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Listen, God does not want you ignorant of what He said. You've got a Bible in your hand. You can read it through every year. You can read it through several times a year. I saw a 90-something-year-old woman that had read the Bible through three and a half times by the 1st of June. An old maid school teacher. She'd never been married. Her eyes were good. She outlived all of her family. They got her up in the nursing home 6 o'clock in the morning and she was up all day long and had that Bible in her hand and she would read and read and read. So we find that there has to be a time of spiritual growth. Now what I want to deal with tonight is I want to deal with spiritual maturity that comes out of that. One, you've got, you've got to be a sheep before you'll ever hear the voice of God, the Word of God. Once you're a sheep, you hear the Word of God, you listen to the Word of God. 
If you don't listen to the word of God, you're going to be carnal in your lifestyle. You're not going to be where you need to be. So you've got to hear what God says. But the last part of verse 27, he said, and they follow me. Why, why do we follow God? Because we know something. I live for God because I know something. I want to deal with that just for a few minutes tonight. And part, hey, this part, as spiritually mature children of God, we should know some things, not just the, in the Bible. Listen, I hope you know how to lead somebody to Christ. I hope you know how to give somebody or help to get assurance of salvation. Listen, the only place I can't give them assurance of salvation, that comes from the Word of God. You say, preacher, how do you know you're saved tonight? I know I'm saved because God said I am. That's all I need, folks. Hey, you go to Romans chapter number 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But you go on down with a heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Boy, what a blessing. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you tell me about a time and take me to a place? I don't mean having written it down in your Bible because I don't believe you could ever come to God lost and not know it. If the church building hadn't have burnt down, I could take you to within three feet on the back pew of that church where I asked God to forgive my sin and I asked Jesus Christ to become my Savior that night and I got birthed into the family of God. Hey, I'm talking about following Him tonight. We need people that are mature. A lot of it I blame on pulpits. Pulpits have been in shallow preaching for a lot of years. Oh, it sounds good. They'll give you four points in a poem or a song or something like that. And hey, we need that. But friend, we need to know just exactly what God is saying. That's why I like to preach through books. We need to hear what God has said in the Word of God and understand it. My sheep, they're saved. Hear my voice. Now is a time of spiritual growth. And I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. Boy, what a blessing tonight. Do you know that you're saved? I don't think I'm saved. I know. I was talking to God today, walking down, went up, checked the mail, and talk, walking down the driveway, and I said, thank God I know. I was talking to him about my salvation. I've been saved 46 years. I was thanking God uh, and talking to him about what a wonderful thing that he did uh, in my life. Uh, hey, you need to be sure. It's a place of protection. It's a place of perfection. It's a place of privilege. Boy, aren't you glad that you know that you know who you are? You say, how do you know? Well, I know because of the Word of God, but I also know because I've got confidence. I've got confidence tonight in the Bible. I believe we've got it, folks. I believe I hold in my hand the Word of God itself. I'm not ashamed of a word that's on it. I don't think it's been mistranslated. I don't believe that it's got omissions. I don't think it needs any additions to it. I don't think you need to do anything but live by it. And I believe if you live by it, you'll do right well. Oh, what a blessing tonight because of the confidence... Hey, the Bible said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've got confidence. He said in 1 John uh, 5, 14, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Confident. I know tonight because of a change of life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is, not will be, shall be, should be, or would be, friend. At that moment of your salvation, you became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Brand new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I, hey, I wasn't perfect when I got saved, friend, but I'll tell you what, I can go back to that night and God renovated my life. God renovated it. He renovated my home. 
Went home, told my wife I got saved, got family in church, friend. Hey, thank God for that tonight. I'm talking about because of confidence, because of a change. I know tonight because of conviction. Old Paul in Romans said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. I thank God tonight that when I sin, He wears me out. I remember as a lost man every night asking God, Lord, if I've sinned today, I want you to forgive me. If I've sinned. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I got saved, I found out everything I, I was doing was sin. <laughs> God just, hey, God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be tonight. I thank God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad that now I know right from wrong, and I know when I do right and when I do wrong, and God speaks to my heart. And then because of the company that we keep... He said over in 1 John 3, We know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not is a brother abideth in death. You know, God changed my watering hole. God put me in church, fell in love with the people of God. You know, I don't think pastors need to be hard on people. I think they need to be overseers to try to help them when they, when they see some things that they need. I don't think this pulpit is ever a place for a dictator. That's not what we're here for. I'm not here to run your personal life. Did you know that? That's between you and God. Hey, I just pray for you. Amen. You pray for me. Mine's between me and God. So we have problems. But because of the company you keep, I love church. I love God's people. God got us faithful to church and we fell in love with the people of the church and we got busy and boy, it didn't take us long. Hey, I was uh, driving a, a 63 passenger school bus. I was teaching Sunday school to small children. Ronnie Downey, one of our missionaries, that little boy was raised up in my Sunday school class. Singing in the choir and then leading the music and then out on visitation. Listen, thank God. Hey, we need to know tonight and be assured of salvation. And then we know the truth. We live in days of a lot of lies and deception. You ever know? Oh, boy, that's, if, you, if you watch news, you're going to go crazy. I just, I, I look on the computer, I've, I've got several news things, and all I do is check, uh, check the headlines to make sure that they didn't drop a bomb on uh, Los Angeles or something. You get up there, all you get today is everybody's opinion. I call them talking heads. They've got all of the answers, but they never have any of the solutions, all right? Hey, if, if they're that smart, they need to be running the country. Hey, I don't want their opinion. I want to know if somebody bombed Los Angeles or not. Now, I don't want those people bombed, but I want to know if they did. Hey, I'm talking about tonight because of the company we keep, friend, and then because we know the truth, the world's in confusion and change. But thank God I've got a Bible that has not changed since I first got one back in the 50s. Read just like it did back in those days. Isn't that a bless? We have truth tonight in deliverance, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make, not set. What is this about truth tonight? Truth will make you free. It does not set you free. It makes you free. The, the truth of deliverance tonight. Then the truth of discipleship. Over in 3 John, John wrote this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Truth. What's it do? Truth disciples you. It teaches you. Do you know I'm still learning? I was studying for Sunday school for Sunday morning, and I, just amazing me the things in the book of Numbers that I had never seen before. And I, I don't know how many times I have read through the Bible. I'm not bragging, but I've been saved 46 years. And I've done a lot of reading in the Bible in 46 years, and I see things every time I go through it that I never saw before, isn't it? But hey, we're still learners, still growing. The truth in doctrine. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, a workman. Studying the Word of God is work. It takes time. It takes dedication. It, ta it, takes, it takes laying aside what you think and seeing what God says. You know, sometimes we've got a preconceived idea of what something is, and yet we're not biblically correct on it. And they, I try to lay aside what I think and read and study what God says to, to make it either confirm what I think or remold what I think. You know, the Bible talks about the renewing of your mind. Sometimes our minds need to be renewed. We've got a lot of things up here that we picked up over the years that may or may not be right, and we have uh, made them right in our own eyes. And then uh, a lot of these preachers, I, I call them Paul parrots. They just uh, say something that somebody else said, and it sounded good. But I'm talking about the truth in doctrine tonight. We need to rightly divide the word of truth. If, I, if you don't know what biblical or hermeneutics, how many of you seen a book on biblical hermeneutics. Let me tell you something. One of the finest books. I'm not taking everything that they've got tonight, but it shows you how to study the Word of God. You've got the first mention, principle, Bible interpretation, the last mention, the full mention, context mention. All of these things, what you're doing is you are taking the Word of God and not pulling something out of context. You're reading it within the context. My pastor used to say a verse taken out of context becomes a pretext. You can make the Bible say anything you want. So we find here the truth. We know the truth tonight. Then we know prophecy tonight. We live in days of fear. You know, the Bible talks about men's hearts failing them for fear. People are scared to death. They're scared to death. I go back to the masking thing. And listen, if you've got a bad call for something, one wear a mask, that's fine. But these people got them under their noses. They've got cloth that, that wouldn't stop anything. One doctor said that wearing these masks that they had was uh, like stopping a, a fly from going through hog wire. But it's a comfort thing with them. They're scared. They've been scared to death. One man said that our nation is going to have to apologize to its people for scaring them to death. And they've done that. Not that COVID, I'm not saying it wasn't a real deal. But I'm talking about the fear that was generated. Hey, we know prophecy. We know what time it is. He is going to descend one day. First Thessalonians chapter 4, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. Boy, hey, thank God. We were talking about that before the service. You know what one of my greatest fears was in Bible college? That the Lord would come back before I ever got to pastor a church. I've been here 36 years. I wish you'd have come back before I got to pastor a church. <laughs> Amen. I, no, I, I have no problems in that area. Hey, let me tell you something. And his time's not our time. His way's not our ways, folks. And he is not late. He said 6,000 years. We work off of a Gregorian calendar and we work off of a, Mr. Usher's dating system in the Word of God. We're not real sure exactly when that beginning took place in B.C. We put it back 4,000 B.C. That's a general number. He puts it at 404 B.C. We put the birth of Christ at either 1 B.C. or 180. You don't have a zero, okay? You go from 1 B.C. to 180. He said before, hey, the Gregorian calendar is not correct. We may be right on the 2,000 since Christ. Hey, I'm talking about the Word of God. We know we're de departing, friend. I thank God one of these days, just like today, we're going to heaven. And then our destiny, boy, oh, what a change. Whew. So when this corruptible bush shall have put on incorruption, won't you be glad when you get a new body? 
friend lady on the phone today and the boy they're having a lot of issues health wise and I said I thank God one of these days that we're going to get a body that's going to be fit for an eternity. I'm talking about a body that'll never get sick, never go old, never get tired, never wrinkle. I'm talking about a Bible, hey, a body where you you will feel perfect all the time. Boy, isn't it a blessing to feel perfect? All I don't know what that feels like. I made a statement one day when I was in my 60s. I said, I feel as good as I did when I was 40. That was on Sunday morning. I came back that night and apologized because I said, I don't even remember what I felt like when I was 40. Thank God. Hey, we're destined to change. And then tonight we know there's an eternity coming. You know, mankind is fear uh, controlled by the fear of death. I, I don't know what eternity is going to be like. I spend a lot of time thinking about it. I know, I know what the Bible says about it, all right? I know what the Bible says about it. But I want to tell you what. When he said, Behold, I make all things new, that doesn't mean it's going to be new and then grow old. That means as long as you're in heaven, it's like the first time you ever saw it. It's always going to be the excitement of an eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. I cannot, I cannot fathom that tonight. I can't. I, boy, I, my heart, you know, Rodney and Carolyn have been gone over a year now. Been with, been with the Lord over a year. I cannot imagine that tonight. We'll be like Christ. First John chapter number 3, we'll be with Christ. Revelation chapter 22. And then in Psalms, we'll be satisfied with Christ. When we get there, he said, when I wake with thy likeness, he said, I shall be satisfied. You know what? You're not going to be dissatisfied with heaven. I thank God in that verse of Scripture, he said, my sheep, these people are saved. Hear my voice. Listen, we need to grow in the Lord. You need to grow. You need to grow. You get old. Hey, don't, don't be a spiritual babe. That's what he was dealing with in Hebrews chapter number 5. He said in a time when you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you once again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Talks about using milk, not needing milk. Babies need milk. I use milk. I don't drink as much as I used to, but I used to like milk. I didn't need milk. I, I used milk. But thank God when we get to heaven, everything's going to be all right. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And then he said, they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. Let me ask you a question tonight. Are you saved? Do you have assurance? There's nothing to be ashamed of not having assurance. The shame is when you don't get it taken care of out of the Word of God. I, I can sit down with you with this old Bible and sit with you and show you what God said. And you know what? Most of you already know. When people doubt their salvation, most preachers say, well, let's just nail it down. Anybody ever heard that? Let's just drive a post in the ground. No, that's not what you do because if they got saved back here and they're just having an insurance problem, all you're doing is re-crucifying Christ every time you do that. He died once. You get saved one time. I want to take you back to where you said you got saved and find out why you didn't get in. You find out most of the time. I ask them, well, when did you, when did you get saved? <laughs> They'll tell me when they got saved. they tell, take me back to a time and a place. I want them to have assurance because they can pray a prayer here and then if they have an assurance problem, they pray a prayer here and next thing you know, they've been baptized so many times their skin's wrinkled. I want you to know and have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Amen. Let's stand tonight and we're going to have an invitation. If you need to come, you come. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Boy, I love that song.